Today we're talking Mr. and Mrs. Smith, not the 1941 version, not the 1996 version, not the 2005 version. This, this one. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Every episode is dropping on Amazon this weekend. That's different. They usually do it week to week, but uh, I want to talk about this series. No spoilers, of course. We may come back and do that. I'm Jay. I'm John. It's two strangers land jobs with a spy agency that offers them a life of espionage, wealth, and travel. The catch? New identities and an arranged marriage. Can it work? Will they make it work? Donald Glover, at least he's the star. Well, actually, he and Maya Erskine, they're the stars. He is John, she is Jane. Together, they are Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Glover also has a hand behind the scenes, and anytime he's a writer or a director or anything like that, you know it's got potential to be good, and I won't lie to you, this first episode got started in a really compelling way. A lot of this show hinges on you caring about Mr. and Mrs. Smith and their relationship. The ups and the downs, which there are a plenty, but uh, that honestly came across as the best part of the series, and you get a lot of that in the first episode. Just trying to work out, okay, how, is, how are we going to make this work? Are we going to say certain things to each other, or do certain things like... What is this? What the f*** is this? The constant series of questions that they're asking each other and what boundaries do they cross, right? They're a married couple. They have to act like a married couple. And these are things that we know from the 2005 movie. Now, it's handled in a very different way. And that film really honed in on the action. I would say this one's more about the relationship. I found this show to be more compelling when we're at home with our characters and they're just trying to trying to figure things out, and they're talking to each other in a way that feels supernatural instead. Not supernatural. Supernatural. Difference. But yeah, you get a married couple on screen, even though it was kind of an arranged marriage. You want to relate to that in the best way, and it's just kind of like being there with them on the couch in the midst of them struggling with this relationship, and it actually goes in the way that you expect a relationship like this to go. It all starts out peachy, everything's good, once they learn a little bit about each other, can they cross certain boundaries, but we also have to focus on the mission or series of missions that they're going on to get that ultimate prize right. Uh, but as we go, the more they discover and the more they start to bicker, well, that's when the problems arise. And I found each episode to get more appealing when it came to their characters, their characteristics, and really this relationship. That was much better, in my opinion, than what the action was in this series. It was, it was good. It was entertaining. But I feel as if the people behind this knew how to handle the relationship way more than they knew how to handle the action sequences. And that's not the worst thing ever if you're getting a lot more of that. Now, the guest stars in the show, I won't lie to you, they, they threw me off in the beginning. I see Paul Dano and I'm like, that's why is he that character? And then Parker Posey and then Alexander Skarsgård. And the more we go, the more people we reveal. And uh, it was really cool. I, they're not spoilers. It's on IMDb. Another thing is when the show tries to be overly comedic, there's like bits and gags that are still handled in a in a calm and collected way, but that's when the humor started to fall off for me. And I know that sounds bad, but thankfully the show doesn't do that all that often. It's more so the natural type of comedy, just an inside joke type of thing where we are there with them and a lot of it comes down to the chemistry, man. There's a reason why these two are held to such high acclaim in terms of them being just superb performers. And this is a great example of that. And I don't know if it's the writing or the chemistry, possibly a combination of both. I think that is the case here. But it really exemplifies their characters and allows you to care even when they're mad at each other and don't really care as much themselves. Now, with that writing comes a bit of predictability. A lot of people are expecting this to be a remake of the 2005 movie, and that's not the case. I would say, without having seen the 90s show, it's probably closer to the 90s show, but you can't take me seriously because I haven't seen it. I'm just assuming. And they say never to do that. What is wrong with you? But with that writing, there comes some predictability. And while it isn't a full-on remake of the 2005 movie, they do start to go down that traditional, cliche, conventional, and, you know, expected spy route. And the crazy thing about this is while the spy stuff was pretty cool in part, and, you know, whether they're meeting with other people that have similar interests or 
doing their job and they're doing a couple of things for the first time within this job and they're not these crazy John Wick style assassins. They are learning as they go. We are with them learning as they go. So in that way, it's so different from the 2005 movie, but there are other beats from said film that do happen in this one that do make it somewhat predictable. So very different, but kind of the same. Does that make sense? We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. So it's easy, a bit gimmicky at times. Every episode is like this case of the week. So if you're into those types of dramas, you'll really enjoy it. But I was enjoying this because of the chemistry between our two leads and the cameos or performances. I guess they're not really cameos, but those were cool. That said, anytime we end up with our two characters just holding a conversation while doing spy stuff, that ends up being uh, my favorite part. And the fact that Amazon's releasing it all at once tells me that uh, you may binge this. I don't know if I would. It may become slightly repetitive in that way. That's what I did, and I kind of found that throughout. But it's still entertaining, and this is, a, this is an easy show to watch and be entertained by with some really slick writing and great performances, like I keep saying, over and over. Before I give you my score, let me know down below, are you watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith this weekend, the movie, or this series, and uh, dropping a like would be cool, maybe? Surprisingly enough, the relationship drama works much better than the action itself. Whether it is the chemistry, the writing, or a combination of both, there is so much to love about our leads. The final product is conventional, but comforting and entertaining. That was entertained. This is a nice show to watch on Amazon. Let me know if you're doing it down below, and uh, Okay, what else? I've got more reviews coming. Argyle? Who's Agent Argyle? I, I don't know. Who cares? See you soon.